All right, guys, I think I want to make Jarvis, but I'm going to need your help. Here's what I have so far. Nineteen seventy four stock expo model scan complete, sir. Uh, how many buildings are there? Okay, so that was made with two phones and one of these $10 VR plastic headsets from Amazon. So one phone goes in the headset and that acts as the HUD. And then we have another phone that acts as the controller. This all started last week when I was browsing Twitter. I saw this demo and at first I just scrolled right past it because like how dumb is that? Using a phone as an interface for AR that defeats the purpose of having an AR headset. But the more I thought about it, the more sense it started to make. If we introduce a device as a controller, we could offload processing to it. So the headset becomes just a HUD, and the mobile device that we use as a controller does all the heavy lifting, like running machine learning models or making a lot of API calls. So you could think of it like this. The Magic Leap has a puck that does all the processing, but what if that puck had a screen with buttons and you could use that for interaction as well? This is especially relevant when developing for mobile AR because we don't have any open source method yet for hand tracking. Now, like probably everyone else on this earth, I want Jarvis and I wanna be like Tony Stark. So as I started recreating this demo I saw on Twitter, it felt closer and closer to something you would see in an Iron Man movie. So what I'm proposing is this. I think we should try to make Jarvis. If you're like me, you're poor, and you can't afford AR glasses. But I think if we could offload most of the processing to external sources, we should probably be able to make something interesting with just a few mobile phones. So that demo I already made is actually pretty simple. So I have Vuforia image targets up on my TV and my computer screen. So that's how I'm able to shoot photos and videos onto them. And each image target has a quad that we can render to. So in the case of a sprite, for example, we can just assign the sprite's texture to that of the quad's mesh renderer. And in the case of a video, we can just take the video player component that's already playing the video and set its target renderer to that of our display's quad. Now, the controller phone is running a Unity app as well that sends a broadcast message out every time a UI element is pressed. So every button press sends out a message with the button name, and when a slider is moved, for example, it sends out that new value every time it's changed. These messages are received by the Heads Up Display app, which is tracking the phone screen by way of another image target. This way we get a message that a button is pressed and we can open up a transform right on top of that button. So here's a few details that I learned in that process that might help you guys out. Number one, making an AR app for Google Cardboard style VR is not as straightforward as it used to be. So first, you have to make sure the Vuforia module is installed in Unity. Next, you go to Build Settings, Player Settings, and make sure Vuforia Augmented Reality is checked. Next, check Virtual Reality Supported and add the Vuforia SDK there. Now, go to your AR camera and open Vuforia Configuration. Change the device type to Phone plus Viewer, set Viewer Config to Vuforia, and set Viewer Type to Cardboard V1. Finally, we have to add something in a script, so I made a script called Vuforia Settings that I put on the AR camera, and inside there, you must add a function to the Register Vuforia Started callback. So once Vuforia is started, you need to wait a frame, I ended up waiting a half a second just to be safe. And then you set the mixed reality controller mode to viewer AR. Now we can get an AR view inside our VR goggles, assuming you have a hole or window to expose the camera. Now the second thing I learned is how to stream YouTube videos into Unity because I figured this was something that we were gonna need eventually anyway. Now, I've done this before using a paid asset on the Unity Asset Store, but I wanted to be able to share this project and let you guys play with it for free, so that was not an option. So after some Googling, I did find this guy who made a PHP script that will give us the actual location of a video from a YouTube link. I made a little script in Unity that passes a YouTube URL to this API, and it returns us a usable link that we can pass to the Unity video player and stream that YouTube video to a texture. So if you ever want to use this, you just add a quad to the scene and you add a video player component to it. You change the source to URL and then you throw on this YouTube API script. So put the YouTube URL in there and when you press play, it will start streaming in the YouTube video. Now, I am calling to this script that he was nice enough to host with Heroku, but I have added the PHP script that he used into this project in case his stuff ever goes down. Now, the last thing I learned when making this project that you might find useful is sending broadcast messages in Unity. I've used c -sharp sockets before for sending UDP or TCP packets over Wi-Fi, which allows you to send messages wirelessly from any Wi-Fi enabled device. So you can go device to device, uh, device to Unity editor, Arduino to Unity editor, etc. 
However, I was only ever able to get this to work by hard coding in the IP address, which is really annoying. I have done broadcast messages before from Python with no problem, but I've never been able to get it to work in Unity until I found out about socket.enableBroadcast. I feel like a complete idiot. But now all we have to do is specify a port number and set the IP address to all 255s and it will send the message to anything that's listening on the same Wi-Fi network. So if you want to test this out, uh, I have a send messages script and a receive messages script in this project that you can put on two different devices to send or receive messages over Wi-Fi. All the scripts I just talked about are in my latest project on my GitHub called AR Mobile Interface, which I'll link to in the description if you guys want to play with it. If you're having trouble compiling, uh, make sure to be on Unity version 2018.3.1 F1 and Vuforia version 8.0.1. All right, so here's where I need your help. I need a plan. I'm thinking if we want to make Jarvis, we're obviously going to need some type of conversational element. So without reinventing the wheel, I think it makes sense to use an Amazon Alexa. They're fairly cheap, they're like $30. You can make Alexa skills for free, which are basically just voice apps for the Alexa. I'm thinking if we can make some Alexa skills that communicate with Unity, we're not only bypassing the difficult task of creating a conversational AI, but we're simultaneously offloading complex processing to the cloud, making this app actually feasible to run on our mobile phone. So if this works how I think it will, I'd love to be able to like ask Alexa to play a particular YouTube video and then that video plays in AR inside our headset. Or we ask Alexa to like say, uh, what is the weather? And then the weather shows up in AR in our headset. So what I need from you guys is some actual ideas. Let me know in the comments what you guys think this thing should actually do. Like what would be useful? Like should we even use the Alexa or is there some other cloud-based API that I don't know about? I can see this project getting out of control very quickly. That's why I think it's important that we have a clear plan. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. Anyway, that's all I got for today. So I look forward to hearing all of your ideas in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for more updates on this project. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.